So a couple of years ago, the Intuit trainer writer team, you know, we're all, we work alongside Intuit. We don't work for Intuit. They hire us to help them with their content, which is really awesome for all of you. So you all know, like they have real practitioners, people that have been doing this for 10, 15, 20 plus years. Some of, some of my colleagues in the trainer writer network have been doing this for 30, 40 years, and they have us help them design content for them. And so one of the things they ha had us help them design was the new client checklist. And so the new client checklist is this checklist that really goes and really assesses the client for success. Always begins with the business accounting profile. Why? Because the business accounting profile is the detailed assessment of everything that client does. It's their needs. It's their literally their management needs, their bookkeeping needs, their tax needs, their workflow needs, their tools they need. It's everything. It's their full profile of what they need from you and from their professional service providers. In that profile are questions like, what type of entity are you? Not only the formal legal entity, but also the tax entity type. Also, are you in a specific industry? Do you need a specific niche expert to help us in this engagement? What kind of accounting tasks do you need done? Um, and when do you need them done by? Um, do you have specific workflows? So, so you start asking about those things and you start building out their profile. And so when we started having this discussion with the Intuit development team, with their education team, they were like, okay, so you're, you're, you're mentioning things about how all the different kind of categories or areas on how you have to service the client. So would it make sense that after you created the, the basic profile, so the basic data for the client, that we go ahead and say, okay, so you may have these different categories of services that you will provide to the client or eventually provide to the client as they grow and as they need those additional services from you, right, the bookkeeper. What if we created a needs assessment spreadsheet based on your services? And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so brilliant. Yes. And I'm thinking like, not only is this going to be great for us to be able to assess clients, it's going to be a great for bookkeepers to assess what it is they need to learn, right? So, oh, I need to learn about accounts receivable because my clients have invoices and collect it, you know, and have to process um, invoices, receive payments you know, post deposits, all in the sales workflow, right? The full sales workflow. When you start realizing that your client just said they have to prepare invoices, that is in other words, just so you know, we got to switch into bookkeeping language. Your client is going to say, I have to prepare invoices. Your bookkeeping brain should say, oh, that means I have to actually do the accounts receivable workflow. I actually have to I talk to them about estimates. I have to talk to them about invoices. I have to talk about how important it is for, to receive the payments and to post them correctly to the invoices. I have to talk to them about undeposited funds because while the, the payments are pending, they're in this undeposited funds account. Then I have to talk to them about the importance of, of posting deposits correctly. So that way it all comes in as a batch and that way it reconciles and matches perfectly to the bank. Oh my gosh, that's what you're thinking. You're not telling your client that. <laughs> because they're going to freak out, right? You just let your client say, I prepare invoices, because that's entrepreneurial talk. I prepare invoices, or I invoice for my clients. That's all. That's how they speak, right? In your bookkeeping brain, though, you're thinking about everything that it has to do with invoicing, because there's a lot that has to do with invoicing. Well, you can take that same concept and you can apply it to all eight of these categories. So what is their expense workflow? Do they just, you know, go and spend money with their credit card and their debit card, or do they have accounts payable? And do they have the full workflow where they have vendors, they have terms with their vendors, so they can enter a bill and then pay it later? Do they have employees, which means now you have to understand what the payroll workflow is. Um, again, what is their daily operations? Remember my example where I said, let me walk a day in your boots. So if I'm speaking to my real estate agents, because i that's another industry that I've niched in, that I've specialized in. Let me walk a day in your heels. I'm like, tell me about your day, you know? And so learn about their daily operations, learn about their specific needs, learn about any specialized apps you need to incorporate from them. And then most importantly, learn about the reporting that they're going to need so that way they can make decisions off of them.
And that's basically how the need client assessment uh, spreadsheet was born. And so what happens in the need assessment, as I mentioned, is that the needs assessment tab is based on categories. And so each category is actually based on that circular diagram I just showed you, the uh, sales and accounts receivable, the expenses and accounts payable, the employees and the payroll, the industry specific needs. And so you basically have a spreadsheet that not only provides you the categories that you should be aware of. That's why I'm super excited, by the way. Like this literally is what everybody asks. Well, what am I supposed to know? Well, what task am I supposed to be aware of? Well, what questions am I supposed to be able to ask? Well, this is it. This tells you everything in a spreadsheet. It literally gives you all of the answers in the spreadsheet. And so once you actually start going through the categories and realizing how it's connected to all the different areas that you need to learn as a bookkeeper, you also have inside of that, that second tab, which is the needs assessment tab, you have where you can put yes, no, yes, no, based on what the client's answers are when you're asking them. So of course you can use this alongside a client, which is super exciting. And then you also have another column, the last column where we as practitioners went ahead and dug up resources all over the web, Firm of the Future, QuickBooks blog. Sometimes we even refer to the ProConnect Tax Center blog, which is into its tax side of the business. That's where they sell their tax uh, products. It's a tax family. So we went and dug up all of these resources, checklists, blogs, guides, and we stuck them for you in the help resources column. So as you go ahead and complete the needs assessment, then what ends up happening is that magically, and really is magically because this is a formula that, that and I say they built into it because now to get to the point where it's now becoming this gorgeous piece of work, that's all on the Intuit development side. They have designers, custom designers that work for them that build all of this out. And so what happens when you finally get to the third tab, which is the QuickBooks features tab, it starts answering the question for you. So which solution is best for my client? Based on all their yeses and nos, and based on all my notes, and based on me going and checking the resources and seeing, oh, they really do need this particular line item. So just because your client says yes or no, doesn't mean the answer is yes or no, okay? You need to go back and do your homework and say, actually, they said no, but they do really need this. And so you need to go ahead and go back and make sure all the yeses and no are right. Why? Because as you actually start completing the needs assessment, the next tab is filled out for you. And based on the answers, it's color coded and you basically will see, oh, so do they need simple start? Do they need essentials? Do they need online plus? Do they need advanced? Of course, at this point, this is now a QuickBooks solution. So if you decide to use an other bookkeeping solution, again, this is this is not a QuickBooks bootcamp, guys. This is a new discovery bootcamp. So I just want you to know you can use this spreadsheet for another solution if you're using another accounting solution. Of course, it makes more sense to use QuickBooks for this. QuickBooks Online specifically is what this next tab is about. Um, but you think about it. Like, don't say, well, I can't use this because I don't use QuickBooks. What? You can use the client profile tab and you can use the needs assessment tab, absolutely. And then you can build this for whatever you need. But obviously, you know, out of respect, I would say you need to use it with QuickBooks because it is an, a QuickBooks Intuit uh, resource. And then the last tab that's super important on this spreadsheet is that it guides you to the onboarding process. So it's like, what? So now you got your needs assessment done. You filled out your client profile or the beginning of it to start getting some really good ideas on what kind of um, you know, deeper questions you should ask about the client, their entity, their tax, their legal. Uh, do they have employees? How many? Things like that. Their corporate status. Um, then you have their needs assessment. So what specific they need and you split it into categories. From there, it basically magically assessed which QuickBooks Online solution is best for them. And then the next tab gives you a shortcut to what's called the client onboarding process. 
So when I showed you what the heck is client onboarding, right? So this is the client onboarding process. We give you just a short 10 step list on the different areas of client onboarding and what would be included in client onboarding. And just so you know, if you can see here, I have the spreadsheet uh, tab here on the left, but then I'm also telling you that this was actually inspired, again, always collecting our ideas and collaboratively, that's how we create magic. When we were thinking about that last tab, where they were like, well, shouldn't we have one tab to kind of guide people through the fact that, you know, now they're onboarding the client. If they got the client, if they engage with the client, they got paid, they got the contract signed and back. Um, shouldn't we talk a little bit about onboarding? And it was interesting because when we were creating the spreadsheet, we're like, well, this is not an onboarding spreadsheet. It's an assessment spreadsheet, but we wanted to give you all at least a jump start. And so what we did is we went into QuickBooks Online Accountant, which is the Intuit Accountant free dashboard for Intuit Accounting, Bookkeeping and Task Professionals. We went into the Work tab, which is a free project management tab for anyone that wants to use QuickBooks Online Accountant, which you all know, right? Hopefully by now. Now I have tons of resources around QuickBooks Online Accountant. Um, and we just took, they have what's called, again, cookie cutter. They have a quick start template with 10, oh, actually they have 12 steps in theirs. And we grabbed those steps and we just dropped them into the spreadsheet for you. And that's what that last tab is. The last onboarding tab is a jump start to any client onboarding that, you, that you'd want to do. But we actually went ahead and were inspired by those steps by looking at the Intuit QuickBooks Online Accountant Dashboard, which is again, the dashboard for Intuit Accounting, Bookkeeping and Tax Professionals, we took their steps in their template, it's called a Quick Start Template, and we just dropped it into the spreadsheet for you. So again, it's just something to jumpstart and inspire you. It's not the full onboarding guide. Okay. So obviously I get super excited about this spreadsheet um, for so many reasons. I truly believe it's got, I truly believe it has your best interest in mind uh, for several reasons. First of all, I truly believe Intuit has your best interest in mind because they're giving you all these resources and education opportunities. You got to go out there and just take advantage of them. But secondly, specifically for you, it was built by practitioners. So it was built by people like every single one of you that deal with these things every single day. But I just want you all to, and encourage you all to take advantage of it. So just really quickly, um, if you haven't seen it before, and if you've been in any of our QuickBooks online certification exam classes to prepare you for the exam, you already have received this spreadsheet. We give it to you. It's the only place we give it to you, by the way. We give it to you when you're taking the uh, QuickBooks online certification journey, which is how to become a pro advisor. We give it to you there. And we also give it to you. The other place is we give it to you in the self-paced training. So if you actually go to your QuickBooks online account and dashboard pro advisor training, and you go into the self-paced training where you can learn about uh, becoming a QuickBooks Pro Advisor all by yourself. Um, we give it to you there as a link. That's it. That's the only place. That's why I actually had to ask permission from Intuit if I can give it to you because it's not found anywhere else. Um, and so, and, 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 and by all means, that makes perfect sense, right? Because it's theirs. It's what they're giving as a gift to their Intuit accounting community. Um, and so, but here it is, guys. Here's the actual spreadsheet. You all are going to have it. I'm going to go ahead and send a link to it so you all have that. And you can download it yourself. Um, you'll want to just, I'm going to send it to you as a copy, as a Google spreadsheet copy. And so hopefully that was super helpful to all of you.